Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Ah, okay, I'm uh, doing good, bud. So here we go. We're on uh got some Odin Force going, and I guess yep. today we're gonna be rolling with a bunch of berserkers and see what uh see what questions okay. uh we got. And then but like you said, we'll just if they're baffled and confused with these questions that they're asking, they'll they'll leave even more baffled and more confused. As I do That's every week. For. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> Bring it on. What questions we got? Name first question. All what right, guys. Right. So uh, this first question here is from a gentleman uh, that's in an Ozzy tribute band, and his name is uh, Todd. So okay. Father Todd. Yes, we know Father Todd well. He's, he's, he's a brother. He's a brother in Odom. So what, what do we got? What does Father Todd got, man? Hey, Father Zach. Hey, Father J.D. It's Todd down in the Houston chapter. Hope you guys are well. Uh, the new album is rocking. So my question is, what's y'all's favorite song we play live? Hope you all have a blessed day. Thanks. All right, Father Todd. Uh, like I said before, we were uh, we discussed this once before. Uh, not speaking for me, I mean, I enjoy the whole thing. I uh, The whole thing's fun, but I think what Goose enjoys most is hearing the uh, the Zeppelin Sabbath mashup before Love the uh, Kabuki drops, Love and then uh, the, the, the bow at the end of the night so J.D. just can get as far away as possible from me. And I think that is, that's when he just goes, this suffering has come to an end. <laughs> the sound of Goose. feedback at the end is amazing. <laughs> It's so the great. feedback is the best part. The road really about, mom, 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 mom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Zach's been running scales. He sounds wonderful. <laughs> but uh, no, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to What's, think. What is your favorite, Zach? What is? It? I'm, I'm trying to think. I mean, it's just like uh, even when people ask me, like, "What's your favorite Ozzy song or whatever?" You know, like when we yeah, play, yeah. like, no, obviously, "Flying High" again. I'd always love that one just because I love that solo and everything, and just it's. A, cool song to play but like you said I, when i'm up there i always have a blast playing all of them yeah you know what i mean yeah so it's just like uh and you know i, I mean like when we when the the mellow set of the show you know when, we, yeah. when the piano comes out i love doing that part too so i mean totally um but it is fun whatever album new album we got yeah whatever crusade it is it's always fun kind of playing and in, interjecting some stuff. of the newer songs into the yeah, show yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I, so I mean, like yeah. we were talking about now, whether Destroying Conquer is going to come into the set. Yeah. And so, I mean, we were playing Set You Free. I mean, that was fun yeah. just because, Yeah. I mean, at the time, that was the only single that was out. So, right. But that was fun playing that one because, you know, yeah. if, when you record it, you, that's when it comes to life after the it's, basics are done. So you don't. It's fresh. It, it's fresh and it's new and it's yeah. allowing. And it's, you know, because it's, it's the way we do it. It's we don't do it in rehearsals. The finished product is not in rehearsals. No, music, no. The song they hear on the record is not. Yeah, because like usually right a there. lot of bands would, they we'll have to, like, the songs yet would already be done, and, and then they go rehearsal. in the studio and record them. We right. don't do it that way. No. So, like, the first time we played it is like, wow, that's the first time we've ever played it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. it's just like, uh, yeah, I'd have to say, <clears throat> obviously, on the new one, last tour, obviously, Set You Free was a lot of fun. That was definitely yeah. cool. I love Trampled, man. Trampled yeah, is a lot of fun. I like playing that one. That was a fun one. Totally. I mean, actually, since we first started putting that one on the set, yeah, without a doubt. Totally. totally. very cool. Yeah. All right, guys. All right. All right. Let's go, Father Brian. Next question. Thank you, Father Todd. What do we got? Next question. Brian! So we got another one here from D. Stinson, who asks, uh, is the outro to Overlord inspired by Michigan J. Frogs? Hello, my baby. I feel it's obvious, <laughs> but I have to know for sure. Any chance of covering Hello, My Baby while we're at it? I refuse to believe <laughs> such silliness doesn't already happen. Uh, we're just a bunch of morons, and that just came from... I don't, what was, was I just doing? Ethel Merman. I, yeah, you know, Hello, My doubt. Baby! Yeah. I'm just, <laughs> totally. It's totally Ethel, you know what I mean? It was so Ethel. It was that. great. <laughs> it's just like, what is that? That's horrendous. That's, Good, let's use that. Let's use that in the end. And it was amazing. Yeah, uh, so as you can clearly see, people are still talking about that more than they are the song. 
without a doubt. The end and with the video it was amazing. Yes. There you go. <laughs> All right. So we got another one here from Graveyard Disciples USA, great. who asks, uh, "The Wild Audio Thorax is the most badass looking guitar ever. Will it become available for purchase to the general public?" Well, JD enjoys that fiddle because there's three pretty much sharp points on it. And he just goes, if I miss you with one of them, I have two more options. That's right. So, you know, that's why the goose likes that one. Yeah, but uh, now we're just fin- putting the finishing touches up on the thorax. Those, The ones me and uh, Father Dario have been playing have been, uh, those are the prototypes. So we're getting the, uh, we're just dialing them in a little bit more. And then, uh, yeah, they'll be up and running before you know it. Cool, man. And they're good, you know, I mean, for home security. Somebody breaks into your house, you got the, the thorax, you know? Exactly. You're great. And you're not going to play, you know, uh, uh, you know, we could be friends or anything like that. You know, exactly. there will be no James Taylor songs to be playing when you got when you have the thorax and you have three sharp. Exactly. Hang. Three weapons of you know mass destruction I mean? right there. Yeah, they, they, they won't be robbing your house anymore. Good next exactly. question. So we got Renee Mendoza here asking uh, just on the on the uh, topic here of self self-defense will you ever post your workout routine and will the black label society brand ever produce fitness equipment like shakers and wrist wrist wraps well we were talking about before you know work i mean you see jd gets a workout because he's been carrying me around since we've been 18 years old so you know so and you're, as you can you're see heavy JD's, now zach you're jd heavy has the head, jd and of all the black label uh affiliates and all the uh the members he has the that's why JD has the best deadlift and squat numbers of all of us. And I have to thank for that. You know, not as a trainer, just as his as his weights. <laughs> <laughs> You're very heavy now, I gotta tell you, bro. <laughs> yeah, yes. But I mean no, I mean on on uh on this last tour, I mean I I guess uh actually when we were got <clears throat> off the stage, that would be our hour and a half of cardio up there. I'd get out and uh I'd lift in the sub for probably an hour and just doing curls, push ups, side lateral raises, calf raises on the stairs. That's about it. Then JD come in and beat me up profusely and then put me to bed. <laughs> it was a good night. And he would use me as a heavy bag and then just put me to bed. And I got my workout in and it was a good night. Speaking of JD <laughs> punching you in the face, uh, Tyler Gilbert has a question here. Hey, fellas, I'll throw out a couple of questions for you to pick. What's your favorite venue to play? How is Zach's oh. face able to handle so many blows to it? <laughs> How do you get your luscious locks of hair so soft? And what's your favorite BLS album? Oh, my God. That's a lot right Take now. it away, Goose. That's a lot. What's, what's the first question? What was the first one? First question is, uh, what's your favorite venue to play? Venue. Wow. Madison oh, Royal, Al- Royal Albert Hall was pretty cool. Yeah, Royal Albert Hall is definitely black label. That's, that's our crowning moment, I would say. Yeah, that was the that Royal was awesome. Albert. Amazing. Yep. Um, yeah. In America, I think pretty much things. anywhere where anybody shows up I, is pretty I much. Our ask, I think place. if you ask really any musician that, yeah, it's kind of like you know. I mean, you have crowning moments when you played with Vinnie Moore, when you guys yeah. played with Rush, when you did the Garden. Yeah, yeah. You know, I remember like you know when I played the Garden with Ozzy, that was yeah. a big deal. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm saying like you have those venues, but I mean, yeah, I, I mean like. Like you said, Goose, I mean, like, people always ask musicians that, like, you know, what do you like playing a smaller place or a big place? I think if you ever ask any musician, though, I mean, we had just as much fun when we did the Troubadour with Black yeah, Label sure. as we did doing the Royal Albert Hall. Yeah. You know, I'm just saying because yeah, of the energy totally. and everything. And it's, yeah. a, mm-hmm. it's still energy, but it's a different thing. So if you're in a smaller place and everybody's p- crammed up on each other in sardine canned in there. Yeah, sweating. That's, that's ah. a different type of energy. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like a more of a chaotic energy. And then like when you're playing a, a big place or you're, you know, when we do any, when you do Download or Donington or, you know, yeah, like yeah. any of the festivals, we have a or that festival that we did, the Woodstock Festival in Poland. It was over yeah. 500,000 people. Yeah. It was I mean, and that was insane too. I mean, it was it was just insane. this ocean of people, you know, you couldn't even see to the, the end no. of it. No, no. I mean, and that was like, Amazing. that was a pretty, bless you, buddy. Bless you. That was, uh, that was a pretty insane the energy it's it's there it's just it's just a different form yeah yeah totally yeah and like you yeah. said anywhere where the people show up that's our favorite place to play that i'm sure yeah i think if you ask any musician that they'll tell you the same thing yeah totally 
and then uh, the other the other actual serious question that he had there was, uh, what's your favorite BLS album? Uh, Goose would have to go probably um, before probably before the existence of Black Label would probably be his favorite <laughs> album. Well, <laughs> but if, fire another hanging curve. <laughs> but if I had to choose one, I I always like our last stuff, man. I always like. I mean, I love I love all of them, but the last stuff seems to be the stuff that I really like the most. A lot. Well, I mean, like me and Goose always talk about it. it's just like uh, it's a weird thing with with the existence of Black Label. I mean, from the first album until we had the uh, and when the Black Vatican was created, when, when we have order. our own studio now, it's order just kind of like. Me and JD talk about it. I go it's like that's the next chapter of Black Label. So from yeah. like Order of the Black on is a whole nother kind of lifetime of Black Label. Yeah. So I mean, to me, because that's when me and JD pretty much started completely producing the records and yeah, mixing, mixing them, them everything, the yeah. whole nine yards. So and and then having the affordability of the yeah of having the Vatican. So yeah. I think uh, yeah, and I, I think. I really think, you know, each one of the records, the, the way we approach it is just, um, especially sonically, it's just to have it so it's a bigger bench press than your previous record. Yeah, keep getting better, each one. Yeah, you just want, you know, just everything to sound, it's it just the sound yeah. quality. Yeah, You know exactly. what I mean? It's just fidelity is just so, yeah, d- bigger lows, the mids, the highs are glassy and and just, but everything sounds warm and good. So, you know, that's, I mean, and that's the fun of making them, you know totally. what I mean? Going in yeah. time, just to have, even if, if your bench press is 500 pounds, if you can do <clears throat> 502 or 505, the next meet, and you, you beat your previous record. So that's, yeah. that's. All. Yeah. Totally. I'd have to say, yeah, like you said, I mean, we're having fun right now. It's Kum Kum Incorporated. Yeah. Grimace was the last one, and we we were Love. really happy with the way that one came out. So, yeah. I mean, here we are with Doom Crew Inc. But I, the crazy thing is, I can't believe it's like that one came out in 2017. That's already five years ago. What trampled? Uh, Grimace. Grimace, yes, trampled and everything like that. That's already five years ago. Jesus, 2017. Man. Wow, is when that album came out. So, I mean, we're usually it's, really we're, <clears throat> yes, wow. 2017. Wow. 2018 was pretty much Royal Albert Hall at the end of that, on that touring cycle. Yeah, wow. <clears throat> so fast. Yeah. Flying. Flying by. Well, and then, you know, I mean, the <clears throat> the pandemic was two years. Yeah. You know, when it shut All down, right. when we played the rave with the Milwaukee almost chapter, and then two the years day. went by on that. Almost Flying day, by. Bro. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when, when you say, like, you know, <laughs> like Zeppelin and Sabbath, wow. Ozzy would... Ozzy with Sabbath lasted from 70 was the first album. Yeah. <clears throat> and what was it? The last album was 78. Eight, Eight years, years, man. And then Zeppelin was only, I mean, what, to 80? I mean, like 12, well, 12 years. Yeah. 12 years, 68, 69. They, they, they came out yeah. with the two albums. So. To 80. 11, 12 died. years. I mean, that much has just flown by. <sighs> You know wow. what I mean? Oh, I know. I mean, I mean like, and like you said, the Beatles, they're eight years. The Beatles were eight years they created eight all years. that that body of work. Insane. I mean, it, it is pretty crazy. I mean, you know, I've all, I, I, I would imagine Keith and Mick, like I said, when uh, Sabatini, you know, when Barb and your godson went to yeah. go see that show, Mick had said on stage when they were at the So Far Stadium, he goes, Yeah, it was 60 years ago today is when me and Keith met in high school, whatever, you know, grammar yeah, school, yeah, yeah. whatever. 60 years ago, like to them, wow. they must be going, man, it doesn't seem like 60 years ago. Wow. I said, my father, when he turned 80, you know, he's, yeah. he was just like, he could only be 40 twice, you know. Yeah. But he 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 was like, where's the time gone? I know. Like to, to my dad, it just it didn't, yeah. it seemed like Normandy was like, you know, yeah, like a couple a, months ago, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like a couple years yeah. ago. To me, it seems like I've known you for 60 years. <laughs> it's that painful. <laughs> it's just, it's brutal. It was brutal. Oh man, you gotta love it, man. You gotta love it. Stop using fucking bad soap. Your skin hates you for it. Go get yourself some fucking good soap instead. Where? From, From- fuckinggoodsoap.com, of course.
Yeah. Fucking Good Soap was started in 2018 in Portland, Oregon, with one purpose in mind, to make the best bar of soap in the universe and give anyone in the middle finger while doing it. So it's yeah. not. Yeah. Well, it's listen. a promise. So it's, it's, it's just not just a name. It's no. a promise. It is a promise. And it's handcrafted in small batch process. Uh, most FG soap bars contain only seven natural organic ingredients and start at just $7 each. Ooh. Bruce, take it from there. Choose from 15 incredible scents, including spearmint and peppermint, ginger and lime, cucumber, melon, and, of course, the insanely popular man bar with its perfect combination of mahogany and musk. Oh, yeah, maybe, maybe Barb will want to hang out with me. I, I'm going to get, gotta, get the mahogany and musk. You better Listen, get that. Be careful with this one, fellas. The, uh, the panty soaker may have just may have been a more appropriate name for it. Well, it's call, a to call to action. Here we go. Support a small business. Smell fucking good. Feel fucking good. And fuck some shit up. <laughs> go to, <laughs> go to good fucking goodsoap.com. <laughs> and use go. the promo code GOOSE. For 10% off your entire order. Wow. That's, That's fucking goodsoap.com for dirty mouths and clean bodies. You, you filthy got it. fucking animals. Yeah, that's fucking goodsoap.com. Yeah. Smell fucking good. Yeah. All right, what's the next question? Bram! All right, so the next question here is from Matthew Wilson. And uh, Matt Wilson says... We've all read the incredible Zach Wild novel, Bringing Metal to the Children. And I'll probably read it again. But my question is, Father JD, when are we going to get a book from you? Let me, <laughs> please let me know ASAP or I'm 80% sure Zach will hit me or you again in the face. <laughs> now, well, well, let me just preface this book yeah, yeah, before yeah. JD writes it. Yeah. It'll probably be one of the most depressing novels you've ever read in your life. <laughs> it will be. It'll be a sad it's story. A good, it was a good life up until he ran into me at Three Princeton Drive at my mom and dad's house. <laughs> it would, yeah. Uh, well, I did get my piece in in the book, so for now, I'm pretty good with that. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, ben, the best was JD's segment in the Bringing Metal to the Children book. He's like, it's kind of crazy. I really didn't have to think much at all. It just came out. <laughs> came right out. <laughs> Ten minutes. Just wrote the, it first time. From the <laughs> desk of John. This <laughs> from mind to pen, 10 minutes. That's it. And heart. <laughs> and heart. And soul. <laughs> <laughs> Which has been blackened and ripped out <laughs> yeah, for and some smashed. time now. And broken. <laughs> for a long time. What is it? 30-something years? 36? Years? I don't even know. Yeah. It's been a long time, man. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Gaining on Mick and Keith. We got a ways I to know. go. But we're we're yeah. still we're gaining. We're gaining. Yeah. We're gaining. I feel like you guys are going to be in better shape than them. You know? God, they're still in great shape, man. Are you me? Killed. Yeah. And dead. Drinking. Drinking. I mean, shit. dude fell out. Of, didn't he fall out of a tree or get a coconut out bounced off his head the other a day? coconut on the way down. Yeah. And now he's all good. good. Impenetrable. It it's is. crazy. Uh, it is. So his defense is impregnable. <laughs> his style is right, right, it is. Yeah. Yeah. He's got from the same cloth as Dempsey. Yeah. And listed. Really. Without a doubt. He's so um, out of doubt. Vince Rominger has a question here. He says, I've been a huge fan for a long time. And his question is, when is the next exact Sabbath tour? I'm kind of interested in this myself because I missed you guys when you were in New York. I mean, the, thing, the crazy thing is the Zach Sabbath thing, Goose, that was over two years ago. That when when, when you I filled, filled in, in yeah, for Glasgow. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that's almost, <laughs> almost three years ago. Yeah, three years ago. That would. Yes, that long ago already. Man. Once again, flying by. Flying by. You ain't kidding, man. Man. You ain't kidding. But no, I guess um, the next Sabbath thing we're going to do, I guess, is the next couple records. I guess, you know, I guess the next one up would be the Paranoid record, then uh, Master Reality. And then just keep going on until Ozzy starts singing in the year. The time hits Sabbath, bloody Sabbath. I don't know what vocal lessons and what Wheaties the, the boss was eating at that point. Then you got the Sabotage sure. album. One of the, one of the, I'd say one of the greatest vocal performances of all time. I hear you, man. Put him up against, I'll put the boss up against all his peers. On that one. Without you know, a doubt. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, between Robert, Ian Gillen, 
Like all all those guys in that so job. Hard. You know what I mean? Always yeah. peers. And we and always bosses. loved that record. And you said the boss really doesn't like it that much. No, he does he does not sabotage. <clears throat> he he considers the Love last classic record. Sabbath record and it ended at Sabbath Buddy Sabbath. Yeah. Maybe, Which is I'd love, crazy I'd to love me. And I, and I yeah. get, you know, I get the, the him not wanting, you know, the, the last two records or what are the Dark Horse records. I mean, I like them. You know, yeah. I, I mean, if you're a fan of any band that you you love, you, yeah. you know, well, side of you with your Dynasty record. Yeah, you know? it broke my heart. You can't even revisit or appreciate it at all. Broke my heart. No, you you were done. You you refused to even go anywhere near anything. I'm done. Well, it's I'm like done. Clancy, like Father Sharinian. Derek, yeah. he can't. He can't get it after after 1984. He's done. He will. Yeah. He refused. He jumped out of the plane, and that was it. I hear you. I don't even I think he listened to any of them just to hear King Edward. No, just to just to go fast forward it to the solos. He didn't even pull a right a, a goose. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just get to your solos <laughs> and you know your favorite artist. If you can't stand the songs, just yeah, I just want to hear the solos. That's it, man. He didn't even didn't Clancy. Nothing. I don't even think bothered with that. Wow! Just refused. Just jumped out of the plane and re- and just I got the old records and I will listen to them. Yeah, no, but, yeah, uh, you know. yeah, but that's where Oz considers you know with the the last two. Yeah, uh, and I I always I still love like those records. Yeah. You always have some memory that certain records, you know, growing up and everything like that. So, yeah. but um, yeah, that's the uh, that's what's uh, on the, the news desk of uh, Zach Sabbath. All right. Um, so Bill Johnson has a little bit of an irreverent question here. He says, Hey fathers, have either of you had a turtle head on stage and how do you deal with it? <laughs> um, no, I, I've never, I never have. I've never, I, I've either take no. care of business. Or I've never had that. I remember the no. boss. I remember Oz doing, I think Randy Randy Castillo's God bless his soul. Randy's drum solo, Oz running down him and Bobby Thompson. God bless uh, his soul. But yeah, BT yeah. had to take the boss, and they were high tailing it for a bathroom Dude, somewhere, bro. Oh yeah, I mean it was hilarious. Good thing for the drum <laughs> like, solo. Yeah, people only know, bro. Oh, like, I know the Prince, of, the Prince of Daphnis, our fearless leader. That's They're just great. running. As fat, he's pulling a complete Jesse Owens, man, trying to get to the bathroom. In the <laughs> <That's> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, and Oz came back a little later on the feet and, you know, still crush it. Oh, ah, yeah. Never had it happen, though, man. Nah, nah, me neither. Nah. Bring it on. Next question, Father Brack. All right. So we got a question here. Uh, from actually a few people have sent this question, and it's about. Uh, tab books so are you going to be a, are you going to be putting out a tab book for this new album um i don't know i mean i i, I don't know if, you know i mean obviously it would either be a, a company would either approach us about doing it or whatever you know what i mean yeah if they're gonna put a tab exactly. book together you know with bass and guitar or whatever so in the meantime you could just watch the videos you know half the time i'm posting the solos on on Instagram anyway. So, you know, yeah. now so you Dario's, not, or the Kid Dynamite's been there shredding away. So, you know, you got that hey, as well. Really? So you're not involved in that? They don't come to you and make sure that the tabs are correct before they print them out? or no, though, Well, I mean, obviously you got qualified people doing it. You know what I mean? You got other guitar players and bass players doing it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, but I mean, the ones I've usually always checked are pretty much, they're, they're pretty close, if not spot on. And then, uh, so. Unless you got me doing Rush, you know. JD doing the rush. Uh, you the were rush doing the right tabs. notes. Doing the right, right notes, notes, but playing it like ridiculously wrongly in a, hard. In a hard position. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. Ponta yeah. Life's and would have smacked me in the head. He would have been like, idiot, well, what are you doing, dude? Yeah. He would have just radio. probably smacked me in the head with you just for no reason whatsoever. Uh, even before I started second, playing it. The second he would have seen you, he would have smacked you. He would have said, just for, the, just for attempting it, spirit of the radio. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, there you go. <laughs> What was that for? Just even <laughs> trying to play one of my songs. But, um, oh, my God. <laughs> exactly. I was playing it right now, but they, it was the uh, harder version. Yeah, 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 totally. More of, a, more of a stretch. Yeah. But go ahead, Father Brian. Next question. Bring it on! All right, so the next question here is from Michael Hearn, and he's asking uh, a question to both of you guys. Are there any 
musicians who have passed away that you wish you gotten to write music with? And on the other side of that, are there any current musicians who you still hope to write songs with? Ghost, what do you got? Well, well, if I would have had the opportunity to write with any of them, I mean, Jesus, it would have been amazing. How many are gone that you would you love? Like, you know, Lennon, I mean, there's a million. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean what, what, my, my take on that, though, is like, if you could put together a bag, oh, I'm already in it. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. I'm in it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm, I'm in black, white. I'm playing with the guys I want to play with. Yeah, <laughs> like I, yeah exactly. That's you know it. what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I hear yeah. You. As far as that, I, yeah, like yeah. you said, we have our heroes and your favorite. I think it would be even more of a thing to just hang out and talk with them. No, I hear you. Than actually jam with them or write with them. You know yeah, what I right. mean? Like just if we to... could sit with Randy or you could sit with John Lennon and 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 George Harrison and you ask them questions or Jimi Hendrix yeah. and you go, what were you guys thinking when this happened or with that? You know, just and they would go, oh no no that you know this is what. This is what brought that on, or what you know. If you could yeah. just pick their brain about certain things, totally. And I think it, I think that would be more of a cool hang than even writing or anything. Yeah, you know, I, I hear you, really, because there's a lot of stuff that we would love to know. Yeah, yeah. Totally. I mean, aside, I mean, I mean, like when I'm hanging That'd out with cool, Ozzy, though. when he starts telling me all these insane stories, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, being such a huge fan of Sabbath and everything, and then, you know, of other bands where he goes, oh, Zach, I remember we did a tour with these those guys, and I remember blah, 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 like comedy off off the charts, you know what I mean? Yeah, where you yeah, go, wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to me, that I love hearing all those stories, you know? Yeah, but I mean, it's totally, just like, uh, yeah, totally. Next question, Brian. Next question. Well, yeah, from, Father Brian. Next question is from Chad Henderson, and he says, uh, if you two decide to do a guest spot, AEW, what would the one wrestling move you would have to use to be your finisher? I feel like he could have worded that one better. What would be the finishing move, Zach? Well, I mean, I've been sending the goose a a bunch of uh, wrestling uh, Instagram posts of, of, you know, like current guys, you know, new guys, you know, with the finishing moves. Remember, JD? I was sending that last night with all these crazy finishing moves and all these, like, moves that you don't see. Yeah, it but was, they're they're like it was and amazing. usually it always is isn't that always the best though? Actually even somebody said, you know, they had the IS and Hulk Hogan, you yeah. know, from like before WrestleMania it and that match was in Japan. And they, you know, but somebody actually wrote under the thing, they go, Man, everything's all you know, all wrestling is better in Japan. You know, because you see all these like insane underground, athletes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just like underground matches from like it doesn't matter. It could be from Bob Backlund and Billy Superstar Billy Graham, but like the match they did in Japan smoked the WrestleMania match. You know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah, it was yeah. just better. You know, and so that's why, you know, somebody just wrote there, oh man, like all the wrestling, it's everything's better in Japan. You know what I mean? With all these underground playing and stuff. Uh-huh. So um, I don't know. I mean, the the moves- Dudleys have definitely had the Dudley brothers with the tables. Yeah. They had some great finishing moves. Yeah. I mean, the, just the well, table with the rope up on the top rope going through it. Two tables or another table, those were always good. The the you know, the Road Warriors always had great finishing moves. Yeah, yeah. You know, putting the guy up on the shoulders and then off the top rope. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. The guy doing a flip or something. I mean, like those yeah. were always good finishing moves. Yeah, the Steiners, the Steiner Steiners back, had you know? great finishing moves. Yeah, man, totally. That's it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, mean I, I think power bomb. <laughs> The power bombs, and I, I think. Imagine doing what, that to somebody like. On, I'm wait, on concrete. <laughs> I, my, my brother was mad at that me one day because he caught me smoking, and he power bombed me on my sidewalk right in front of my house, in front of all my friends. Wow, I mean, he's lucky he didn't break your neck, break ribs. I mean, the whole. Dude, I was yards. in pain. I was fucked up, hard body. I mean. Um, it's ama- it's amazing that they don't get you know. Well, he just right? wanted to make sure he got all the stuff out of his lungs. We wouldn't get emphysema. <laughs> he he would help. Power bomb would get it out. He would help, yeah, the older brother. Yeah, I mean, he was looking at it in a medical kind of way. <laughs> 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 all right, next question. All right, I got. Hey, at one. least your brother probably said he didn't say this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. <laughs> no, he just said, "What the fuck are you doing, dumbass?" He probably said, "This is going to hurt you more than it's going to hurt me." But go ahead, next question. All right, our next question is from Thad Ferguson, and he's asking, 
Who would win in a drunken tour bus fight? JD or Big Philco? Oh, Phil, you were Philly? The, the mongoose. That's why he's the mongoose. Who, right, wins, get in a, that quick, who wins, a quick. cobra or a mongoose? In that fight, the mongoose yeah. always takes out the cobra. Yeah. It'd be tough going against a shark bear, though. Yeah, well, that, you got that, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. All right. All right. So that's it for the fan questions. But I got a question right for on, you guys. Um, Bring it on! What, what, like, contemporary bands do you listen to? If any, like, uh, what's your favorite new band from the past 15 years? <laughs> JD listens to this band called the Black Crows every once in a while. <laughs> it's, a, it's a brand new, wait, <laughs> they're new. Yeah, right. Well, they're not from 1973. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. so anything, anything that's yeah. not from 73, anything from 73 on is considered new. <laughs> <laughs> So that's Steve Miller. I like that Steve Miller record. Yeah. If, if a band comes – so 74, then that, that would mean Skinner is a new band. Yeah. <laughs> so if it came out in 74, that means it's new. Yeah. No, do you guys listen you know, to anything that's not metal? I don't know. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, do we even listen to metal? I mean, not, not, not at so home. much anymore. No. No. I listen I, to I, everything but pretty much, whether it's classic rock, Funk, jazz, I mean, you know, the yacht rock stuff, Zachy loves, and yep. all this other stuff, and anything but metal, pretty much, man. There's a lot of yeah. progressive stuff, too, you know, like, you know, Maha Vishnu Maha Vishnu. stuff, and, yeah. you know, stuff like that. I mean, what's so crazy is just, uh, you know, like that with Uwe John Roth. They asked him, they were like, oh, you know, is there any current bands? And he goes, I don't listen to music. He doesn't even actually said he doesn't even listen to music. Doesn't listen to. He all. goes, it's all in my head. Wow. Like I'm always, I'm always either hearing music just in my, what I'm thinking. But I, wow. but you know, it would be interesting to go like, oh, I mean, like if you're doing the dishes or something, you know, if you're just folding Man. laundry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you put Hendrix on or something? You know what I mean? Like you yeah. know, just something to listen to. You know, you're like yeah. JD, when you're vacuuming the house, you put on your old Kiss records. You know, just because just a. Just to put them on while you're doing something, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't I mean, it's weird. I mean, like, I'm, yeah, because like I was saying, like when I was when I'm walking the dogs or I'm just working out, I, I yeah. like you said, I'll put the dregs on. I think yeah, dregs. I'll put tunes going. Yeah, I put Alan Holds. I've been listening to a lot of Holdsworth lately. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just to yeah. like, just to listen to something else or Pat Martino or whatever. You know, like when I'm noodling on the guitar, just hearing you know, the chromatic yeah. scales he's doing them and just trying cop some of them. You know, just copy it, yeah, you know, while yeah. you're hearing it. Right. You know, while I'm noodling. But I mean, uh, but no, usually, I mean, like you said, if I'm going to listen to like old records, you listen to like things you listened to when you were 15. Yeah, you know. Like old records. Old yeah. Well, we're always playing though, man, you know, always playing piano or, or guitar or something. So we always have music around us one way or another. Either we're playing it or we are like, you know, we got it on the phone on the bus. Always, you know, in the bus, working out or whatever, you know. Yeah, at the end of the night. But, I mean, it's just so, like, yeah. but we don't listen to, you know, we know of Meshuga and everything like that. Yeah, all the, all yeah, the really, yeah. Like, we're crying it at the end of the night that we get off stage. Like I said, we'll throw out rock on while we're hanging out with the rest of the Doom crew in the, in the front lounge. Yeah, just, just laughing just and having out. a good time. Though. Yeah, without yeah. a doubt. But, no, just as far as current bands and everything. Nah, I, it's not, nah, like you said, it's mostly old, old staples. Yeah. Yeah. But next question. What do you got, brother? So that, that's about it for the questions that's today. It? But that's I would me. like to say, if you would, uh, if you want to hear this show early, you can sign up at Gas Digital Network and use code BLS for a seven day free trial. And if you want to get your question played on the show, send an email or send a video question, preferably, to wildgoosepodcast at gmail.com. And, you know, we're going to try to do this about once a week if, if we can get the questions in. So You got it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know if I can take it. Yeah, it could be pretty brutal. <laughs> Actually, that one wasn't that brutal. Well, they didn't no. get into our hygiene yet and stuff like that. So it, it was very good. It was very nice. good. It was a good job. Awesome job. 
Once again, it was gluten free with zero yeah. nutritional value. Exactly. And useless information. Exactly. <laughs>